let's kind of rock the head side to side, front and back, do a little circle. Nice, nice, and you can just free, free massage here the neck. Nice, and let's bring the hands to the heart and to the lower abdomen. Pull the hand on the lower abdomen. Let's take a few deep breaths into the lower abdomen. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. Allow yourself to relax on each exhalation into the chair that you're sitting on or the bed or wherever you are. To soften the muscles and give way to gravity. Softening tension from the, from the neck and shoulders. Feeling that area we massaged. Release on the exhalation, release that energy into the floor and the earth. Slow, relax into your chair, soften the muscles. Feeling that you can surrender your muscular tension into the chest so you don't need to hold anything up just can really let go and trust the earth trust the chair to hold you up inhalation be a little fuller a little deeper each top of the inhalation you notice each bottom of the exhalation you notice that Bottom of the exhalation, you notice it. We're going to talk about the yin and the yang and how it's connecting with the breath. Let the breath, each breath to be long and full. Explore the range of motion of each inhalation from the beginning. So you notice Beginning of inhalation, still inhaling, still inhaling. Here's the top, and then exhale. The beginning of the exhalation, the middle, and the end when there's no air in, you notice that point. So feel that the different stages of the inhalation, the different stages of the exhalation. how yin transform into yang, how inhalation, which is yin, transform into exhalation, which is yang. Okay, so let's open the eyes, if you will. Beautiful. Uh, so nice breathing. So really, the yin and the yang is, is a concept uh, that uh, came from Taoism. And then we talk about the duality in life. Yeah, we have the positive, the negative. This is how we create electricity. Electricity in, got invented because of that. And actually even, so this duality between two, yeah, we talked about chi and uh, flow or tension and how tension is actually, you have to have tension in order to have energy. You have to have positive this is how electricity works, right? There's the, the difference in height creates a flow of energy. And when we are in a state, in, in the human realm, whenever we are in a state of uh, health, we allow this transformation to happen uh, naturally. We're not resisting it. When the breath is full, that's, the, breath in is in, the breath in is yin. You take the air in. You take energy in. When a baby born, the first thing he does is taking the breath in. And then when we die, the last thing we do is to give the breath back. So that's yang. Yeah, so we're projecting yang and inhalation is yin, receiving and letting go. And whenever that process, so the easiest way to really get into a state of, of balance and health is actually through the breath, is to feel the length of the inhalation, to feel the length of the exhalation to make them even. If there's, a, if there's an even space between inhalation and exhalation, 
the mind, there's a way to release emotional tension, melt, men, mental story tension, uh, by really uh, having a clarity, and that's very important, clarity between yin and yang. Whenever the clarity is not there, this is where the energy gets stuck. Yeah, when we are stressed out, we're inhaling very shallowly. There's actually different emotion, and each emotions in Chinese medicine, we map different emotions and how the breathing change with each emotion. Yeah, so uh, like fear would be more inhalation. If you think about a person that is afraid, what does he do? He's like, <gasps> like <gasps> take air in. So more inhalation is, is, is actually cooling, yeah, and heating is exhalation. So it also relates to, to, uh, to temperature, <laughs> body temperature. So when, when a person is angry, is actually more hot, say hot-headed, because you exhale more. When you exhale more, you have more heat. You actually generate more heat. When you're afraid, you're feeling colder or sad, you're feeling cooler because you're taking air in more than exhaling. So a state of balance is a state of, there's a, there's a clarity between yin and yang. And that's very important. So we can do it with the breath. When we inhale long, when you exhale long, when we put attention to, to, this, to the length of the breath. So that's just one technique. So I, I'd like to make it, this talk um, theoretical, philosophical is good, but also to give practical tools how we can manage our own energy. And so when, so the clarity between yin and yang, to let things flow is, is a state of, of health and healing. And the easiest way to do it is really to work with the breath and with the physical body. And this is why in Qigong, the first thing we do is breath and then movement, yeah? Because energy gets stuck in different areas where, why it gets stuck? Because we because of the mind. Yeah, we have the mind, we talk about the formless and the form. We have the mind, which is a formless energy, our emotion, formless energy, and then the form, which is the body. And the flow between these two uh, creates either tension or the flow, it depends on how the mind. So sometimes we are resisting something, we're not allowing the energy to flow. So then we're creating, we're creating a state of tension. This is not bad if we are, we are constantly in a state of transformation. So we feel like anger could be very good if you realize it, you acknowledge it, and you decide to do something with it. You decide like if, you, if you're angry about something and then you decide, oh, I'm going to do this now as a, as, as, a, as, a, as a response to what you feel. And then this is a very conscious thing, very conscious way to to uh, open blockage in the body, to actually um, decide, uh, uh, kind of like uh, decide what to do with a certain energy you feel. So this is uh, how we, how we, f how we flow between, how we kind of create this this waterfall between yin and yang, and create the energy, the energy can flow. So the concept of yin and yang is uh, the concept of, uh, of balance and Chinese medicine is, is focused on uh, health is about balance, is about keeping the energy flowing. So every, every ailment, every sickness, every, it's, it's seen as, uh, as a blockage in the body. Yeah, blockage in the body blo that resulted in formless type of energy, like blockage in the mind creates blockage in the body, and so on and so forth. So this is in kind of like big picture how we, how the concept of yin and yang connect with with healing, uh, and how it's connected with the I, I, with the concept of chi of of life force energy, and um, and when we connect now. In, in, in healing, maybe we can do another, um, another chi talk about chi as healing energy, this formless energy, how we tap into um, the Hanyuan energy, source energy. These, these concepts uh, are very interesting because this is a, a mysterious way that, that the creative energy of the universe works through us, through healing. And in order to elicit that, we need to be in a state of balance. So uh, to facilitate self-healing, 
we want to be in a, in a state of deep relaxation and, and internal balance. When we, when we have that, when we, uh, when we get there, then we can elicit, when we connect with, with, uh, with source energy, yeah, there's, uh, uh, we, can, we can do a little, uh, another talk about, uh, about that and how to get to, to this state. But really, to, um, to feel safe, to feel relaxed, to feel balanced, this is what we're doing in Qigong, this is what we're doing through the breath, and then, and then, uh, and then this is the first step. So too much yin would be not good, too much yang would be not good. Uh, I'll, t I'll give you an example. Uh, what happens a lot of time with people is that burnout. Yeah, they work too much, or they're really, really stressed all day. They're running around. They have too much on their their to do list, uh, and and that creates that. That's we say too much yang. Yeah, they're running all day. Now, too much yin can be also not good. Uh, too much yin could be like sitting on the couch all day. So you would think that could be actually really relaxing to sit and to rest all day. But actually, in the end of that, um, you can also feel uh, fatigued and not good uh, if you're always in, in yin. So throughout the day, we need to, to realize how we can manage our energy, how to create balance between yin and yang, how to create balance um, in, our, in our day uh, between yin and yang. And then the day usually is a, is a yang, and then the night is yin. And we see it, we see it in different times. Yeah, you can see it in a day, you can see it in a year, like the winter is yin, the summer is yang, now we're in a yang state. So, so yin and yang flowing into each other in a different time periods and there are within ourself. And uh, having a balance between yin and yang is kind of like this, the Taoist secret for uh, health and vitality. To having your day not too yin and not too yang, to having a flow of it, like a, a mixture of energy between yin and yang. So yin and yang creates energy. It's kind of like how the heart pulse. It it expands and contract. Expand so expansion and contraction. Expansion and contraction creates the energy. You cannot always inhale and you cannot always exhale. It just won't work. So the perfect balance is what we, perfect balance creates, um, creates a good and he healthy chi in your, in your body. Um, and, you know, we have now a lot of people have problems sleeping and that's, that's what that's showing you problem in falling asleep or waking up in the middle of sleep is a problem of, of yin cultivation. So people are too stressed out. And that happens a lot in the summer. So people that are too stressed out, there's no clarity between yin and yang. And they, they don't have enough yin energy reservoirs. So they go to sleep. They cannot actually manifest that energy, that yin energy. So um, I don't know if that's uh, clear or does it make sense to you? Um, but uh, we need to, uh, having clarity between yin and yang, better clarity between yin and yang throughout the day, and mix what we do and like not slouching on the couch all day or, or being too much active, doing exercise until we really, really fatigue ourselves, or thinking too much, you know, not being in the yin state or the yang state all the, all the time to alternate uh, is, is really how we cultivate good energy and we can, we can, you know, we can be in a state of health and healing. So, um, any questions about this or, or any sharing about this? Yes, Edward, yes. Love when you're jumping in. Uh, Ellie, so uh, I had a, some time before this uh, uh, Zoom, and I was going over the stuff you posted on Facebook. And mm -hmm. two things. One is what you wrote or copied or put up there from Rumi was incredible in the sense of letting it go, whether it's an illness or a, a conversation, negative, whatever. So I want to thank you for that. I already sent it to my son. So, oh. <laughs> but the other thing which was, you said, which I think was a miracle because, um, you know, I'm so close to people dealing with this, was 
you said that oxygen cannot, cancer cannot live in oxygen, in an oxygen rich environment. Right. And then you said proven. So could you expand on that? And, you know, you've worked with people who had cancer and, you know, gone and Parkinson's and lots of different things. So mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. the way she breathing. I took a six uh, week course with you, which was phenomenal. So uh, awesome. Yes. Oxygen rich environment killing cancer and what you've witnessed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, to be honest, most of the people that come to me for healing from all kinds of uh, health conditions, we always start with, with, with how to breathe correctly. And it's amazing. Um, and, and especially people that, that come to me, I can see their breath pattern is, is not good. And throughout the day, they're just breathing very, very shallowly. And, um, you know, what we shared last week is that, uh, you know, there's a doctor that got a Nobel, Nobel Prize for uh, finding out, uh, proving that cancer cell cannot grow in an oxygen rich environment. So if you have, if you're breathing correctly throughout the day, your you, you just cannot cannot have cancer. It's if your oxygen, if your body is oxygenated well enough throughout the day, you you um yeah you in a state of health and healing. And and uh, what I uh, teach people usually when I work with when one on one is um, the way chi breathing. What you did in the in the group practice because that that trained the body to breathe correctly. But not only that, this Wei Qi breathing is really increasing lung capacity if you do it over time. And it, 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 is, it, it, is, um, it takes a while to, uh, to develop that, is the, the dedication, but you realize the, 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 the results right away. Like you, you feel better after, uh, you know, three minutes of it right away uh, with any breathing practice, right? With any, but with this one is, uh, really connected to weight to immune system boosting because it's increasing the pressure of the the energy of your body against the environment and it really tonify the kidney and the spleen energy so this is Taoist, Taoist, Taoist type of breathing and it's very gentle and it's also very very powerful and uh, so I, I usually go and teach people that to really get them uh, after after a couple of weeks, they they already get result. Or even after a week, they get a lot of result if they're doing the practice daily. And then throughout the day, you wanna breathe, you wanna breathe deeply, kind of like what we did in the beginning of this practice. Even if you if you do this kind of the beginning ceremony, what we just did, this deep abdominal breathing. If you do it for two minutes, three minutes. Four times, three to four times a day, you take break and you do this. You're gonna, over time, you're gonna change the way you you breathe naturally. Yeah, so the breath should be deep into the lower abdomen and releasing tension from the muscle and uh, muscles from the shoulders, and really put attention on how and very gentle. It doesn't have to be powerful breathing. This is a, this is something that you can do every day, few few times a day. Uh, there's different techniques. There's breath that is more about releasing tension. There's breath that is more increasing lung capacity. The Wei Qi breathing, what we studied in the in the course that you were in, was kind of like everything together at once, and it's very powerful. After a few minutes, you really feel uh, recharged and you feel stronger. Uh, so I I would. This is this is how really miracle being created. This is how I help people clear so many so many issues, so many health issues. Is is uh, is about as about letting you know teaching them how to breathe correctly. You know, I remember that one person that came and and he was always inhaling from the mouth. You know, and this is a very stressful response to like. To, to inhale from the mouth. And it's a lot of people do that. It's and the breath when you breathe in from the mouth, it's usually a, a shallow breath into the into the chest, kind of like here, you know. And um, and 
And he really had to work on it every day to close the mouth because he was just doing it. And then the third session I saw him is just still open the mouth, you know, so we, we really had to, uh, you know, when we have habit, it's, re it's really hard to break. So you have to put attention of, of, on it. And this is what I do with people uh, among other techniques, but the breath would be the first one. And it's very powerful if, if, if you do it, if, if they do it every day, it's very powerful. I, I also helped a, 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 a woman heal from um, uh, a, a spinal, a lower spine problem just by, just by being, doing conscious breathing throughout the day. Like just every hour, or every two hours, do few of a certain type of breathing. And, and it's so there's an inflammation, you know, the emotional, inf we call it emo when you, when you're emotional, when you're stressed, you just, you don't realize, but you're starting to breathe differently. And so, so remembering to breathe correctly. And if you can do like throughout the day, like three times, four times, just a couple of minutes, three minutes, that would change your energy. That would change your energy completely. So thank you. <laughs> so Ellie, also, um, you know, you got me drinking two glasses of water the minute I get up. Right. And, you know, and uh, we just, um, I just signed up for the three courses for the sleep uh, for this week. And I did it already, but every time you always give us something new and I'm sleeping seven, eight, nine hours a day, you know, and, you know, we, what you gave us the other day is a little preview. So I just did it before I got into bed and I'm gone. <laughs> you know, gone, <laughs> gone, gone in 60 seconds. So it is the breath and the breath that calms you at night and going up and going down and, and getting that. And then with the course we took the six weeks, it's I walk and I wait, she breathe. I expand my lungs. I go into 3D picture, a 3D lung opening, you know, and it's just a habit now. Mm hmm. Awesome. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. And you, you're, you're, you're definitely did all the work <laughs> and everything. Yeah. So the, the morning practice, we, we can do a whole, uh, she talk about a morning practice and what's, what's the best thing to do in the morning. Uh, yeah, we did it in the long group program and it's, it's, it's very powerful. Yeah. So the first thing you do in the morning when you wake up is, is breathing is really the breath and the second one is 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 water yeah we are 75 percent water and uh it's amazing so we, we just gave that instruction and people change their their you know a lot just just by drinking water more than two glasses two glasses of water every day in the morning before before uh you put anything in your body uh yeah so that's that's powerful. Yeah. So, um, you know, if, if you, and I just wanted to say it out there, um, let's see, we have a few more people. Let's, I have a couple of minutes left. So if, if anybody wants to chime in or ask a questions or just share, uh, please, please do. You have the raise your, the raise your hand button. If you click on participant and you can do it. I know we have a few more people here, four more people on. Is there any questions? No. So uh, what I would say is that, um, you know, the reason also I talked about yin and yang and balance between yin and yang, because this is really connected to sleep issues. And if you have sleep, uh, uh, sleep issues, that's a really um, a place where you can uh, get a, a lot of healing done is through because it, it is about yin deficiency uh problem falling asleep or waking up in the middle of sleep if you have that we have we have a workshop coming up on sunday it's going to be very powerful uh and resolving sleep uh issues for good uh so i'd like to invite you to to join us and to really see a natural way without pills, without medication of uh, really falling asleep and waking up in the middle of, uh, of the... Oh, Judith has a question. Okay. Judith, go ahead. Yes. Hi, Ali. Um, if someone wanted to have a course or, you know, have some sessions with you to learn that proper healing breath, how would we go about getting that arranged? 
uh, for individual individual sessions. I'd love to do that with my father. Okay, yeah. Uh, why don't you email me at uh, eli at chiwideli.com and just okay. write in the subject line uh, one on one. Um, okay. Yeah, and and definitely, I can I can definitely help you. I'd love to I'd love to work with you uh, personally. Great, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so. So yeah, thank you guys. And uh, again, uh, you all invited to join the, the sleep class. You, you learn things that you haven't seen like from this perspective before. And it's really, really powerful and effective. So with, uh, with that said, thank you everybody for joining me. Edward, thank you so much for being such a great uh, participant in this. Uh, I love you, man. I really want to, I really want to say it out loud. I, I, I love your support and I, I, I know that you're doing the work and actually also teaching others about that. And, and there's so much healing coming from, from that. So thank you so much for being the light that you are in the world. Thank you, Ellie. Can you call me now and I'll get Judith and we can talk about setting up? Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Okay. Thank All right. Thank you guys so much. And let's do uh, just a closing meditation. We'll bring the palms together in front of the heart with a knuckle press on the heart center. And uh, close your eyes and notice the 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 space be, between yeah between your uh the heart center and the, the back of the spine so just right here feel the knuckles pressing on that heart center and then just the space behind it inside of you take a few deep breaths into it and smile to your heart smile to your heart and the unity of yin and yang is these two palms coming together. Smiling into your heart, smiling into your internal organs is very powerful. And especially the heart. Thank you guys so much. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you next week or in class online or in the workshop. Bye for now. Bye, everybody.